What is going on, everybody? Welcome to What the Wrestling. Yes, we are live. Yes, yes. Here, 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 here. Yes, yes. We are live, and it is great. It is great. It is great. What the hell is going on here? This is not what I was trying to do. It's okay. We're gonna get this live thing down. Y'all can tell I haven't went live in a while. <laughs> You stupid. Y'all can tell I haven't went live in a while. But it is all good. We are live here at What the Wrestling. We are going to do the AEW review live. We definitely have a lot to get into. There's definitely a lot going on. Perfect. But we still got. You activated my trap. Come on, man. You know we still got the sound bites. You know what we're going on. You know what's going on here. What's going on? May the 5th. May the 4th be with you was yesterday, AEW Dynamite. May the 5th is today, but we have some things to get into before we get into before we get into the review. So before that, just a couple of things as I have everything set up, but we just want to make sure everything is a okay. So with that, we have we, some things to get into. Yeah, let's let's not double, let's not double check. But with that being said, we just want to make sure everything's straight. So Please hit the like button. Uh, my is my ding. That's right. Hit the like button. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. What the wrestling on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok as always. Uh, RJD ten RJD ten K on Instagram. RJ six ninety nine on Twitter. RJD one ninety nine on Snapchat. Follow me. Follow your boy. Perfect as always. Man, this is great. So, with that being said. You know, we're going to hit the like button. It costs you nothing at all. Literally, it doesn't cost you anything. So please hit that like button for a brother. Please uh, show some love for a brother. Please rock with your boy, please. And if you want to see me run through Resident Evil, please, 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 please um, follow RJD TV. And... As always, y'all know how I do. Y'all know how I get down. AEW review right now. So, I have to find a way. And this is kind of crazy because I, I have to find a way to, like, get my whole intro set up on StreamYard. But I did hear something shortly, which I do want to get into because it is very, very unfortunate. But I heard that they are going to be. Excuse me, I'm looking. I got two screens, so I'll make sure I'm looking at my screen. My screen is right. I heard that they are going to be letting go a podcast on Facebook. And if that's the case, then we definitely, first of all, you stupid. Uh, Stop it. Get some help. If that's the case, hold on, y'all. Let me check something real quick. Then we definitely, first of all, you stupid. Uh, okay, everything's working. Great. So, first of all, that's dumb. I don't know why they would do that. Uh, it makes no sense. Nope. Why would you give her the podcast on Facebook? Like, it's a platform. Everybody could jump on. Everybody could rock out. Everybody could have some fun. Everybody could talk about whatever they want to talk about. And they want to take away a good thing. Why does everybody want to mess up a good thing? Like, nope. what's, what's wrong with people? Like, I heard that. I was like, surprise, motherfucker. Facebook was like, surprise. Yeah, I thought y'all was going to stay on here. Nah, son. And I heard they're not even letting people that have podcasts stay on here. So I hope that is a falsehood. If that is the case, we moving everything to YouTube and Snapchat and Twitch. And I will definitely, definitely be streaming. Um, I'll be streaming on multiple platforms. I will be doing a podcast on multiple platforms. That is coming real, real soon, like within the next seven days soon. I just need to... Make sure if y'all watch my RJD TV screen, <laughs> stream Be stupid. If y'all watch my RJ my RJD TV stream, y'all know, y'all know how bad it is when it comes when it comes to the sound and the technical difficulties. It should be called the technical difficulty stream, like for real. Be stupid. Because like every stream, it's like I feel like the Dallas Cowboys, like Stephen A. Smith, for can go wrong, will go wrong, and it's like I can't help it, but. We're going to work this out. We're getting this corrected. And like I said, it will be streaming on all the platforms. So please hit the like button. 
like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Run over to YouTube. Run over, run over to TikTok as well. I post t- I post content on TikTok every single day, and I'm going to be up in my content. So if you rock with me and you really do, hit the like button. It don't cost you a thing. So with that being said, before we get into AE Dub, which was good. Uh, no, let me take that back. Nope. AE Dub was I. This like this was like the first AEW show where it was like, okay, that wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Like I'm used to AEW being on point, like it's AEW, but yeah, they took they took the the week off this week for sure. Um, after like nine fifteen, it's like showing off a cliff. But let's talk about Tessa. Blanchard, and I'm sure I did I spell that right. I hope I did. Tessa Blanchard, uh, a couple of years ago, before the whole speaking out thing, before the whole bullying thing that took the wrestling community by storm, a lot of your favorite wrestlers, a lot of your favorite indie wrestlers had allegations come up against them, some true, some not. But there's a lot of people right now that had a lot of allegations come up, and a lot of people were scared. Because a lot of wrestlers were going down for stuff like this. And Tessa Blanchard, around that time, she was going, she was like highly sought after. She was trying to get out of her contract. She was, she is, not was, but is a phenomenal, phenomenal wrestler. Um, But she's had, after the allegations, AEW or WWE, they don't want to touch her with a 10-foot pole. Um, So... Unfortunately, she's got a lot of work to do to clean up her image. She was working for WOW, Women of Wrestling, and now there reportedly might be some falling out with WOW, and we don't know. This is all speculation, so we don't know what's true and what's not, but I hope, you know, I don't know what's going on, and we don't know the context of what happened here, which I'm going to get into, so we're going to have to see what happens, but... Because of some allegations within people made about her within WoW, it may be a wrap for her. So let's see. So this is coming to you from WrestlingHeadlines.com. So with AJ Lee as executive producer of WoW announced back in October, they had signed a multi-year deal with Viacom, CBS, for WoW TV episodes to air and syndication each week on The CW. Great. Uh, And CBS stations beginning this fall. So it's coming up soon. For those who missed it, uh, you can click on this link, whatever. But in an update, a new report from FIFO Select, so it's coming from FIFO, notes that there are allegation, allegations of issues surrounding Tessa Blanchard and the company. Uh, yikes already. That's already the yikes. Um, Blanchard, who recently deactivated her Twitter but is still active on Instagram, reported uh, reportedly had, had, had a recent fallout with WoW officials. There is no word on if she's still booked for this week's TV tapings in L.A., but it was an allegation during a mid-April class. Blanchard cut a promo on Samantha Sage, also known as Americana. The promo reportedly saw Blanchard tear apart, quote-unquote, Sage, which led to her trainees speaking up. A source noted that acting classes were then canceled from that point until further notice. At least one trainee was reportedly told that Blanchard would be less involved with the WoW project moving forward, but that has not been confirmed. Uh, Yikes. This is bad all around. This is not good for Tessa. Not at all. There there was actually a report saying that if you like Tessa Blanchard, you better learn Spanish. And uh, that was a shot. (laughs) That was a shot. So that sucks, but like Tessa Blanchard was so sought after. She was so sought after. We were thinking about dream matches with her and uh Charlotte, her and Sasha Banks, and their dream matches with her and people in AEW, even though AEW's women's division wasn't that great at the time. And it's bad now. Like all she's doing is costing herself. It's <laughs> costing herself money. That's all she's doing. It's like, I don't understand what's going on here. I, I hope this is all cap. Stop the cap. But and we don't, like I said, we don't know the context of a promo. It's a promo class that she was teaching, instructing behind the scenes. So if it was just a promo that was a little hard and the trainee got a little soft and 
got a little emotional about it. You know what I'm saying? Emotional damage. Then it might not be that bad. She might be all right. But if it was something major, it's going to be a problem for her. Because she's burnt bridges. No, let me not say she's burnt bridges. But apparently, AEW ain't trying to touch her because of um, remarks and stuff that was said, which she still hasn't apologized for. Still, she's stupid. I mean, if she, I mean, listen, if she's standing on her square, maybe she, maybe that stuff didn't happen, or her recollection is different of the stuff that happened between her and other superstars. I'm saying stupid superstars. You hear me? Like it's WWE. Stop the cat. <laughs> between her and other wrestlers. But I tell you this much: they ain't having that shit. They ain't having that shit. WWE ain't messing with her. Uh, what's the name? Ain't messing with her. This is bad, man, because. If you can't wrestle for WWE, you can't wrestle for AEW, you can't wrestle who CGW, HOG. There's many, many indies all around the country, but come on, man. Uh, she needs to get her shit together. And she was trying to clean up her image, but with this, it's it's a it's either a case of oh well, she's bad and she has a bad reputation, so we got her. Gotcha, bitch. Or it's a, or it's the other the other side of the pendulum, which is she really is a jerk, and she just be going in. So I don't know. Um, we're gonna have to see how this unfolds. We're gonna have to see how the how the tapings go. If she's on the tapings, what's gonna happen? But Tessa Blanchard is so damn talented, and now from where she was a couple of years ago till now, her reputation is completely nosedived. Like for real. Her backstage presence, her reputation with wrestlers, the companies ain't touching her. It, it's going to be rough, man. You could go down there in Mexico, they rock with you, but it's going to be hard. And just, you know, all the dream matches we could have got, looks like we might not get them. But we'll see you. How dare you? We will see. But let's move on to AEW in this video game. So is AEW, is the AEW video game in trouble? So the AEW video game is called Fight Forever. Good job. Don't Kenny Omega Marco. is ha highly, highly involved. Uh, he's injured right now. Well, he's beat up. I'm not saying he's injured, but he's beat up. He had to get a bunch of surgeries. He had to get uh, probably do a bunch of rehabs. He had to do a lot of stuff. Because he was beat up and he had the company on his back. And everybody came. A lot of new faces came in. And Kenny dropped the title to Hangman. Now he is able to go away, literally heal himself up as much as he can. And here we go. He was able to do other things behind the scenes like focus on the video game. But apparently there's trouble in paradise. So a new report from Sports Gamers Online, Michael. Michael Straw paints a troubled picture behind the scenes with developer Yuki. So that's the developer developing the AEW video game and AEW games working through a strained relationship. Kenny, o Kenny Omega reportedly hates working alongside Yuki's with one source noting that the studio attempted to take advantage of Omega who, despite his passion for video games, is a novice in the development field. I love video games too. I have video game socks on right now. But just because I love video games and I'm a fan of video games doesn't mean I know what the hell I'm talking about on how to develop them. Doesn't mean I know how to develop them. Because when it comes to developing them, it's stupid. I don't have the knowledge. It's just that simple. But at the end of the day, Omega has a strong passion and strong love for video games. You've seen the stuff with him in the New Day. You've seen all the stuff that, that he's got going on and the stuff that he does outside of wrestling in regards to video games. He's a video game lover. It's okay. It's cool now. We all love video games. But the business side and the other side of it, I guess they tried to take advantage of him, and he, he's pissed the hell off, as he should be, because you can't just go into things naive and blind because – if there's opportunity, people will always take advantage of you. It just it is what it is. So let's see. Continuing, Fight Forever's direction and development constraints have caused arguments between the parties. Meanwhile, the game is now believed to be way over budget. That's not good. Stop it. Get to my. Like I said, 
<laughs> Follow the money. It's all about the money. If it's over budget, think about it. This is like a secondary part to the business plan of AEW and TK and all this. But if they got to get more funding and pump more money into this, this shit better be a success because there's a when it comes to business, if it ain't making money, it, it ain't making sense. So even though I want to play this video game, I'm going to support it. I'm going to buy it just because I want to see how good it is. Just like I'm going to buy 2K22. I'm, I want to see how good these wrestling games are because the last good wrestling game that WWE put out was the Attitude Era 1. And then after that, these games haven't been good for years. So, you know, let's see. Uh, so it's way over budget, leading to a number of planned features being downsized or cut from the final product entirely. The game's roster is set to be a casualty of this too, with Fightful Select reporting on Tuesday that despite AEW's current employing, uh, current employing, employing, sorry. <laughs> you stupid. Jesus Christ. Current employing or currently employing over 100 wrestlers, Fight Forever Elite roster would compromise, would comprise of around 50. Yikes. Surprise, motherfucker. You can only have half the roster. That's bad. Um, That's bad. When you start seeing things getting cut and they start saying words like downsized and they start saying things like cut, downsized, um, budget, <laughs> over budget. When you start hearing that type of lingo, it's not good. Um, the release is set for later in the fourth quarter, if I'm not mistaken. So I hope they make the deadline and if they are already over budget and they can't get anybody to pump pump money into this, it's going to be a problem, man. It may not be looking good right now. It may not be looking good for Tony Khan and those boys. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Like I said, anytime you got people talking about budget or anything like that, eh, oof, not a good look, not a good look. Um, I hope they get this game right, man, because, you know, Omega wants it to be cartoon, uh, more arcade-ish, and he wants it to, you know, I saw, if you saw on Dynamite, they put out some footage of the game, Statlander and Nyla Rose, if I'm not mistaken, and listen, it's a game that I'm going to want to play. It looks a little bit different than the 2K, but that's fine. It looks arcade -y. That's fine. I'm down with that, and the moves are, the moves are good. It's not the final product, and like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do because I don't want this game to be an epic fail. Nobody wants that. So I'm a big supporter of AEW, just like I support WWE, and I just – we can't – listen, look at the wall. Wall got full of games. I got controllers on my wall, god damn it. <laughs> like, we all love video games, but it needs to be right. And even – uh. PlayStation, right there. Come on, guys. I love this stuff, but we gotta it gotta make money, it gotta make sense. Hopefully, Omega gets some, you know, gets things. Hopefully, you know, Omega and Yuki could come together and get their collective visions together and get the creative direction on point because I want to see this thing succeed. I want things to be on point. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be I, I mean, they only got a couple more months to get shit right. So let's see what happens. But they can't be doing this to each other. Shots fired! Shots fired! That ain't going to work. So let's see what happens moving forward. Time will tell. Now, let's get into the main event of the evening. You activated my trap card. AEW. Your AEW review is here. So let's talk about this show. First things first, overall opinion of the show, it was not bad but it wasn't great and as i continue to break stuff as aew standards go my standards for this show are high you know why because this show is amazing it's not monday night raw where it's been consistently bad for so many years you set the bar very low this show has been consistently good since it's since its inception so i would like this show to be great every week but Seems like this week they took an off week. And you know what? It's okay. Shit happens. What are you going to do? What are you going to be mad? No. 
Don't get mad. Shit happens. It's fine. Um, but they took the night off. The show wasn't, like I said, bad. It was okay. But, you know, could have been better. Now, we had the beginning of the show, Bobby Fish versus Jeff Hardy. Uh, first things first, Jeff Hardy scaring me out there. He looks, he looks like he's hurting. And listen, first of all, he looks like he's hurting, and he's still out there doing his thing. Respect my authority. So I'm not gonna dare sit here and badmouth Jeff Hardy. It just like this wasn't one of his better matches. Bobby Fish is Bobby Fish, good striker, great, fantastic wrestler. There was a crazy. Uh, Falcon Arrow off the top. Every time I see off the top rope, every time I see that move, it just looks crazier and crazier. But Jeff Hardy ended up winning with a Swanton bomb at the end of it, and he landed right on top. <laughs> he landed right on top of Bobby Fish. I mean, Jeff Hardy used to do the Swanton bomb, and he used to touch guys with his neck and his head. He used to barely touch guys. Um, now he does a swan song and he's landing right on top of guys like, ouch, like landing right on their stomachs, legit. And so it's like, the older you get, he's like, fuck that. They're going to, they're going to have to break my fall. I don't care. <laughs> like he's still a daredevil, but he don't give a shit. He's like, I'm landing right on guys. They don't like it too bad. Respect my authority. But this was, uh, not his, not their greatest match. Not the greatest match these guys could have had. At the end of the match, the Young Bucks came out. Uh, Adam Cole was on commentary, but at the end of the at the end of the match, Young Bucks came out. They looked at the Hardys, and after they looked at the Hardy, it's like Matt is looking better than Jeff now. How dare you, Matt Hardy wrestling? He looking better than Jeff. That Christian and Matt when they went at it, I think what six months ago, it was a nice, solid wrestling match. Jeff Hardy, he looked like he was hurting out there. Still did his thing. He just looked like he was in pain. That's all. You know, he's obviously he's an older guy now wrestling. I mean, he's not old, but he's older in terms of wrestling. Been through a lot of tables, a lot of ladders, a lot of chairs, a lot of mileage on that body. And, you know, the older you get, you don't move as crispy as you used to. It just it is what it is. So hopefully they do what they got to do. Like I said, that avalanche falcon arrow, crazy spot in this match. But. Uh, after that, Young Bucks came out staring down the Hardys and then tended to Bobby Fish. That's how it went off. Uh, Darby cut a promo because Darby cuts promos like this. And there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can say. Darby Allen is going to be Darby Allen. And if you don't like it, too bad. Shout out to Darby, man. <laughs> Shout out to Darby. We had the Blackpool Blackpool Combat Club versus the Butcher, the Blade, and and Helico. Now shout out to Jack Evans. He is no longer with AEW, and and Helico is his tag team partner. So now and Helico is by himself. That sucks. Stupid. Now what's and Helico gonna do? Because he's just a tag team guy out there wrestling by himself. Stupid. Good luck to that brother. Shots fired. Shots fired. So, this basically was a showcase for the Blackpool Combat Club. They beat the holy hell out of these guys. Pitcher and Pitcher, they had it. They had it. Uh, they had control. When Pitcher and Pitcher was over, this was straight annihilation. And I, I believe Danielson got the submission victory. Um, Moxley and Danielson and Yuta giving, uh, doing the triple beatdown spot. Love it. Love it. Uh, Wheeler Yuta is coming along nicely. The people are really starting to take a liking to him. William Regal, uh, cut, uh, they had a, a marvelous video package for William Regal, which was great. This is all around fun shit, all around good shit. Nothing much to say about this. This was great. Uh, Regal, <laughs> Regal referred to Excalibur as the man in the mask. And uh, <laughs> um, Angelico, not Angelico. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Angelico. Uh, I don't know what the hell. Shout out to Angelico. That uh, that's Angelico's new name, but uh, it is what it is. This this was fine, but they really need to do. <laughs> William Rico, come on, man, get your names right, man. <laughs> get your names right. 
We then had Wardlow versus William W. Morrissey. And you can't teach that. The best part of this match, we won Enzo. No, we don't. We won Enzo. No, we don't. Best part of this match. That was great. Shout out to the fans for that. That was great. W. Morrissey was like, shut up. Shots fired. <laughs> Shots fired. Oh, man, this was great. They had a big, they had a great methodically paced big man, bigger man match. Literally, it was like big man versus bigger man. This was fantastic. Loved it. W. Morrissey uh, pounding, uh, beating up and pounding on Wardlow, making Wardlow look little. W. Morrissey is legit 6'10 plus. He probably is seven feet, but I think he's around 6'10. Listen, if you're 6'10 and above, you're seven feet tall. And you can't teach that. Anyway. <laughs> Stupid. Anyway, this was a good big man versus bigger man match. Hard hitting. Uh, Wardlow gets the pin with one power bomb. I actually like the fact that it was only one power bomb. The only thing I would have changed is I would have did I would have built up to the power bomb spot. Like I would have had him try to do it and miss. I would have had him try to do it and miss. And then when he finally got that third one, the crowd would have popped big. But he beat him with one power bomb, which is great. Got to protect W. Morrissey. You can't beat him up too bad. And after the match, there was like 61 security guards came in and Wardlow beat all of them down. Like literally, Wardlow was like, I'm going to kill everyone. It was like, stupid. Pick that one up. Stupid. Pick that one up. Stupid. Pick that one up. The crowd is like, oh! the crowd is going crazy. We got them yelling over here. People clapping over here. going crazy oh my god like the crowd this was probably the best thing on the show the crowd was going ape shit for this this was fantastic and i put this on twitter wardlow is a star it's it he's made he's a bona fide star and the reason is because they took their time with it they built to it they built to it he kept getting disrespected and disrespected and disrespected mjf is an asshole he's an asshole he's an asshole and then finally wardlow had enough so Wardlow took the mic after he beat up like 15 to 25 security guards. It was a lot. I didn't count. But after that, he said, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop until you, until I get my hands on you and you release me from my contract. <laughs> Shout out to you. You activated my trap card. So after that, MJF said, listen, you want, fine. You want your match? I'll give it to you. But. I have stipulations, and I'm going to tell you my stipulations, not in this cesspool of a city, but in the mad, most magical place on earth, Long Island, which they will be next week. So that's fantastic. Good for them. <laughs> so this whole segment, this whole everything is fantastic. I love Wardlow in this spot. I love MJF. These guys, magic, magic in a bottle right here. Good shit. We also had uh, the ladies backstage. We had Ruby Soho. With uh, Tony Storm and the Dr. Britt Baker DMD. And we also had uh, uh, Jamie Hayter. So these lovely ladies talked junk to each other and then dipped off. Now, here's my problem. Here's my problem. Stop the show. Stop the show. I don't have my stop the show, but listen. Emotional damage. Why, oh, why do they keep doing this to the ladies? Why? Give them some time. Why are these ladies every single week just talking shit backstage? We ain't got no time to give to the ladies. There's only one ladies match. Damn, WWE does more ladies matches than that. Come on, son. Listen, if I'm going to say AEW nope. is doing good, I got to call them out for doing bad. Nope. We can't. We're not going to sit here and cap and act like everything is all peachy. No. Gotta call him out for the good, gotta call him out for the bad. TK, brother. Stop it. Get some help. Get a lady some to put these ladies on TV, man. You got all these competitors. Thunder Rosa, we bitch. She gets the title of Joe uh, You got Jamie Hayter. She could wrestle her ass off. The doctor, Britt Baker, she earned time off. Now I'll put her back on TV. If she's, you know, if she's ready to rock, let her rock. She did earn the time off because she had that division on her back for a minute. Thunder Rosa, we want to see the champion. Why are we not seeing the champion? You got Jade. I mean, we just saw her. She showcased. That's good. But 
What about Tony Storm? What about Statlander in the back? Uh, what about uh, Ruby Soho? Why is Ruby Soho on dark? What the hell is wrong with you people? Like, come on. Give the ladies some more time. Like, there's some shit you could have cut out this show that should have been on dark or somewhere else. But instead, you're not giving these ladies who can wrestle their ass off more time. Like, and I, I don't know why. I don't understand it. Doesn't make any sense. But we need to we need to fix that. That needs to be fixed. That needs to be fixed. All right. Listen. Hats way. Shots fired. Shots fired. Ladies deserve more more time than that. We had Hangman Adam Page. Did he turn heel? So the Hangman came out there and he said, "Listen, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not. I could easily say CM Punk. I'm gonna shake his hand." I could easily say CM Punk. I'm gonna respect him. I could easily say that I'm. It's going to be uh, that I'm glad to be in the ring with him. I could easily say this. I could easily say that. But the truth is, I'm going to beat the holy hell out of CM Punk. That CM Punk shirt, you're gonna have to sell that on eBay. Some shit he said because CM Punk is going to get his ass kicked, and if he doesn't like it and you don't like it, I don't care. You know why? Just bring it, bitch. And just was, bring it, bitch. <laughs> and that was the promo. Uh, he just, he said, listen, he's going to be CM Punk's ass. So he's playing the heel role here. Love it. And he's playing the heel role. Then we got hang, uh, CM Punk playing the baby face, most likely. So he's going to be a tweener for now. He got booed by the crowd. One of his best promos to date. Shout out to the hangman. Um, this match is going to be brutal. It's going to be violent. It's going to be probably... Very, very good. It's going to, be, I, I believe this is going to be old school pro wrestling, uh, slobber knocker, old school JR type shit. Like, this is what that's going to be. It's going to be a hard hitting match. And that's fully what I expect. And, oh yeah. Looking forward to this one. Definitely looking forward to this one for sure. Next. Next, we had Santana versus Chris Jericho. And this was Bullet Club 2.0. Now I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. Stupid. This was interference on steroids. <laughs> Finally, uh, the last interference happened, and then we had a low blow after the 15th interference by the JAS, Jericho Appreciation Society, for those of you who don't know. Stupid. And finally, there's a low blow, Judas Effect, and Santana loses. Ortiz had Ortiz. The crowd was chanting, Eddie, Eddie. But there's no Eddie Kingston because he got fireballed. You know, there's magic. Because you... Hey, you're going to juggle. Fireball. So, yeah, that happened last week. Eddie Kingston was not here. And um, we had a nice, a nice solid match. Like, every time, I ain't going to lie. Hold on, stop the show. Every time, every time I see Jericho... Perfect. I'm like, I'm going to get me a six pack. I'm going to put in the work to go get a six pack. This brother is like 50 something years. I think he's 50 or 50. He's 50 plus or 50. And this brother is out there doing lion salt still. And he is in the, be the best shape he's been in in years. And he's out there moving well. He's smart. Uh, obviously, Jericho has like been in the business forever, literally. So he knows exactly how to work and do what he needs to do. And this brother is in phenomenal shape. I'm like, there's hope. I'm going to get me a six pack and I'm going to cut the carbs. I'm going to eat lettuce and chicken. <laughs> I'm going to not eat after six o'clock. I'm telling you, it's coming. Listen, I got about 15 more pounds before the six pack comes in. And, you know, listen, I've already lost like 30 something pounds. Uh, yes, I know I don't look like I've lost about 30 pounds, but I have. Trust me, I have, and it was all right here. I'm sitting out here like this. <laughs> but, yeah, shout out to Jericho, man. Uh, phenomenal shape, phenomenal shape. But, yeah, low blow Judas effect. That was all she wrote. After that, uh, Santana and Ortiz got beat down, and that was that. Then we had, uh, then we had, then the show got weird. <laughs> so, we had the Varsity Blondes. The Varsity Blondes went out there, and 
Oof. Okay. Surprise, motherfucker. The Varsity Blondes went out there and uh, Brian Pillman Jr. cut a promo. Nope. It wasn't a bad promo. It's just that the fans didn't give a shit. And because the fans didn't give a shit and the promo went long, it kind of was just, it just kept going. He got fired up. The fans still didn't care. So it was like, nope. Then the house heater called out the House of Black. So the House of Black, lights go out, House of Black pops up in the ring, and then they're sitting there like, let's go. You want to fight? You want to fight? And the House of Black, they're just sitting there like, so you're not going to attack me? Nope. I'll attack you. And then they beat the holy hell out of Brian Pillman Jr. and the, uh, the other varsity blonde. It's like, you activated my trap card. Where I'm from, if you call somebody out to fight, you better be ready to fight. And they didn't fight shit. They just stood there like this. If I call somebody out as soon as I see them, it's on sight. Shout out to Proud and Powerful. On sight. So I don't I don't know why they called them out to stand there. Like, that makes no sense. So after they got their asses beat, Julia Hart is sitting there with the eye patch over her eye. And then finally... Uh, Malachi goes to get a chair, gives it to her, tells her to hit Mr. Garrison in the leg, and she refuses to do it. She teases it and teases it, and she doesn't do it. Then Malachi is screaming at her and yelling at her, and it didn't come across that great on TV. On TV, it just looked like something was missing. Like, you're screaming at her and yelling at her, but there's there's nothing else that happened. So it kind of looked like he was just like yelling at her and screaming. He was all up in her face and it was a little uncomfortable. But I mean, we're watching sports entertainment and oh, wrestling. Uh, sports entertainment is down the block. <laughs> but um, it's like you stupid. It, it seemed like this segment was missing something. And then after that, Death Triangle came out. They went to commercial break. Death Triangle came out. They chained off the heels. Ray Phoenix is in the ring because he's got a match with Dante Martin. And then after that, Julia Hart is still in the ring, and then she just disappears. So she had her hand over her eye, so you can't see the mist that went in her eye because she Malachi got mad at her and took off her eye patch. This whole segment was weird as hell. So I don't know what was up with this. Nope. Wasn't my favorite thing to watch. Stop it. Get some Gotta help. hit the button on AEW too. Gotta be fair. And then we had a gymnastics. The, then we had the Olympic tryouts for the next Olympic Games. Dante Martin versus Ray Phoenix. And you want to know something? This match thought this match went about how I thought it was gonna go. Back flip here, back flip there, front flip here, front flip there. Double Spanish fly. Both men land on their feet. Why are they doing this? They're crazy. <laughs> Two of the most athletic wrestlers in the world, not in AEW, in the world. And we got Ray Phoenix doing double spin kicks. We got Dante and Ray doing dual backflips off the top. We got these brothers landing on their feet. These guys are crazy. <laughs> this is a gymnastics competition. Jesus Christ. This match was fantastic. And I know this match is polarizing because a lot of people hate flippy shit in wrestling i don't go back and listen to all my old videos when i first first started what the wrestling ricochet is wrestling dante martin is wrestling nyla rose is wrestling sunny kiss is wrestling uh cody rhodes is wrestling seth rollins is wrestling becky lynch is wrestling it's all wrestling i don't give a shit there's a place for it our truth wrestling there's a place for everybody in wrestling Everybody, if you're good and you know how to tell a story, you, you can have a spot. So I like to watch all wrestling. I like a Cody Rhodes match. I like a Triple H match. Well, old school Triple H. I like a Ricochet match. I like an Adam Cole match. I like an Ishii match. I like a, a Kazuchika Okada match. And I, I like a Nyla Rose match. It don't matter. As long as it's good, it tells a good story, I like it. So I know a lot of people are going to be mad about the flippity flip flip shit in this match, but get over it, all right? 
Get the fuck out of here! It's all good. The Double Moon Salt was impressive, though. I'm not gonna lie. Double Moon Salt. Both guys landed on their feet. These the crowds going stupid for this. The crowds like, oh my god! You see people in the crowd going, oh my god! This is like they're going crazy. I love it. I love it all. It's awesome. Then we had that is undisputed. I'm just playing. <laughs> we had after this. Um, we had the undisputed. We had the match for the undisputed Ring of Honor Women's Championship over the world. We had Mercedes Martinez and Diana Parazo. I like Diana Parazo. She can wrestle. I like Mercedes Martinez. She can wrestle. The problem is the crowd didn't give two shits about this. And they ain't, they didn't have that much time. They worked this match like they had 20 minutes, but in reality, they had closer to 10. So I don't know. They kind of picked, they kind of started to pick it up. I think these two could have such a better match than they had. I don't think the match was bad. I just think they didn't have enough time. Like they they didn't have a time to tell a good enough story. And the other problem I had with this match. Nope. They didn't build up Diana Parazo. They didn't build up Mercedes Martinez. This is the undisputed Ring of Honor Women's Champion, Chip. Diana Parazo has been a long-standing Ring of Honor Women's Champion. Mercedes Martinez just got the interim belt last uh, two, three weeks ago. Why did I not see video packages hyping up Diana Parazo and all the things that she's done in wrestling? All right, maybe you can't use all her footage, but you can at least hype it up. Have her cut a promo from her house and send it to you. It's like something. Have her cut a promo wherever she was at so that you can use it. They could have did a promos from her house. They could have did, I'm the real champion, bitch. You just won this. Like, they could have did something to get me invested into this match. But they didn't give me shit. All they did, oh, Deanna Perrazzo is coming next week to unify uh, the, the belts with Mercedes Martinez. Tune in. No, give me a video package. You could have gave me a video package of Mercedes Martinez or a promo from Mercedes Martinez along with the promo from Deanna Perrazzo, backstage style, both of them telling about how what well, both of them deserve to be number one top dog, but we didn't get that. And nope. epic fail, man. Epic fail. Real talk. I, I wish... I mean, the end of this match was great when she put her in her sub her submission is brutal. Like the, the put them on their knees, bend their head backwards, and choke reverse choke them out. Uh, that is a brutal submission, and it looks like it hurts for real. But we didn't get no hype up to this. Nothing. That's bad. <laughs> like we should have got hype for this. So they need to fix that because there's no way they shouldn't have gave, they didn't give us a goddamn thing. So, with that being said, oh, let's talk about this, too. Oh, how could I forget this? Um, how? Thunder Rosa came out and cut a promo. And her and Serena Deeb, uh, her and Serena Deeb cut a promo, and it just kept going and going. It was like the Energizer Bunny. It kept going and going and going and going and going. The problem is they ate up they ate up a lot of time and I don't think the promo was bad. I just think the promos should have been shorter. It's like Thunder Rosa was cutting a promo and then it's like this promo should have been wrapped up. Serena Deeb came out and they went back and forth. This for it seemed like a long time. If they didn't go back and forth so long, I think the promo would have came off better and I think the main event would have got more time and then they could have told a better story and maybe they could have got the crowd. Who knows? But yeah, the Thunder Rosa Serena D just it's not that it was bad. It just it went too long, I think. I think it, they could have cut they cut a couple couple minutes off that and gave it to the ladies in the main event. Um but messing uh like I said, fanning out the dragon sleeper by uh Mart Mercedes Martinez. I mean Parazzo was trying to hit the dragon sleeper. I mean, Mercedes was trying to hit the dragon sleeper, messing this up. Stupid. And she got her hand bit, bit and she let go of the spot. 
That was fun. That was fun to spot. But that was AEW. That was AEW, man. Uh, not gonna lie. How to sway? Take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, water. man. You ain't yeah. got the answers. I ain't got the answers, but the show wasn't that good. Shots fired! Shots fired! Like I said it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. It was just like, man. Now listen. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This breaks my heart. It makes me sad. Because AEW always, always comes through for me. And I just want them to put on a good show. But it wasn't that good this week. It wasn't that good this week. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Not gonna lie. It wasn't that good this week, man. Uh, they took the week off. We got a couple more weeks until double or nothing, which is great. And they phoned it in this week. And I believe next week. Stop it. Get some help. Next week, they will be okay. This week, not so much. So, with that being said, y'all already know. Emotional it hurts me to say, damage. But I gotta hit the emotional damage on this week's. Uh, I gotta hit the emotional damage on this week's. Uh, <laughs> this week's dynamite. It could have been better. But with that being said, I am out of here. It is time to go. But what I want everybody to do. What I want everybody to do is hit the like button, okay? Hit the like button, please. Hit the like button. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. What's the wrestling? Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. Y'all already know. Respect my authority. I'm not hitting the, I'm not hitting the button. I'm just saying. RJD TV. You want to go watch me, Resident Evil? We're playing some Resident Evil Village. I will be streaming tonight. So check that out. This is May the 5th. When this, this is going up today. So May the 5th, I'll be streaming tonight. Listen. Come get up. Rock with your boy, okay? Hit the like button. Rock with your boy. What the wrestling. My name, RJD. We are out. Everybody be safe. Enjoy. Watch Doctor Strange this weekend. It's going to be really good. Marvel getting back on track. I love it. I'm out. Peace. Hey.